Welcome to Uncaged, the show that celebrates thought leadership from today's top business leaders. The program provides a voice to amazing executives from around the globe who are shaping the world of business today and mapping the path to the commerce of tomorrow. Today, we are speaking with Kip Turco. Hey, Kip, how are you? Hey, Ben. Thanks for having me today. It's great to have you on the program, Kip, and I'm excited to talk to you about what you're doing at StackPath. StackPath is actually one of the leading players in the edge computing space, and we'll get more into all of the things that StackPath is working on. But before we get there, Kip, tell us a little bit about yourself and your career. Sure. Started my career in the Army, so before moving into IT in the civilian sector. I spent uh, seven years on active duty when I got out of the army, um, taking that obviously big change in careers. I thought after being an infantryman, what would be the most challenging thing to do? Work in IT. Uh, <laughs> of course, I'm joking, but I actually took a job uh, working uh, in a network operations center and stacking servers. And mm -hmm. from there really started to gravitate to our, towards technology and really enjoyed it and went on to a software company and a few other IT companies after that before landing where I'm at today at uh, StackPath. That's great. And honestly, I think one of the things that probably doesn't get discussed enough is military training and military background is spectacular for business. Some of the best case studies that I went through in business school studies were military case studies. You can really learn how to deal with problems, but we'll get into that later. Tell me more. You find yourself at StackPath. What are you guys working on? Um, we're working on evolving our edge computing platform and strategy, which really is a combination of three core products, one being advanced networking or primarily CDN, the second being compute, and the third being security um, and packaging it all together as a platform at our you know, edge locations, which from my standpoint, I, I think of on the internet edge, which is where traditionally we delivered the CDN and really packaging those products as a differentiator to allow companies not just to run processing, but run true applications to deliver content more efficiently and better to their end users. Yeah. And I mean, it just seems like the, the demand for anything related to cloud computing is only increasing and accelerating. When you look out at the landscape today, Kip, I mean, what are the key things that your customers are asking for and pushing you guys for? Yeah, I would say for us, it's the key thing they're asking for is to deliver more data in a quality fashion or form as efficiently as possible. And that's kind of where we're positioned well and that folks can extend their applications to run closer to their end users instead of just a large hyperscale regional deployment in order to that, for them to process quicker, provide better analytics to it, and quite frankly, just do it more cost effectively. Yeah, I know that in general, we're seeing costs go up all across the world. So I'd love for you guys to keep your prices lower. <laughs> <laughs> Customers would obviously love that. But you know, you know, when you look in the trends right now in the space, outside of what customers are asking you guys, where are you guys innovating? What is the hottest area right now? Yeah, I, I mean, I actually think we're in the hottest area, which is, um, I mean, the 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 term is a bit evolving as the industry evolves, which is edge computing. And for me, edge computing is running an application closer to your end users mm -hmm. so that you can take advantage of the lower latency, the lower cost to move data to and from things and provide a higher quality customer experience. And the big change that's induced uh, technology to evolve around how to process things closer to the end users is just the increase in that consumption of data, whether it's your kid or my kid uh, playing games and not only playing games anymore, interacting with these games that are very lifelike today, things that are on the come like the metaverse, 
or simple AI functionality that would pertain uh, or smart city functionality that would pertain to a certain geographical area or location like a city like, like Boston. So as the network and the demand for content and all of the analytics that you can do on that content increases, so does the demand to run an application more efficiently um, come into play. And that's, that's where we're iterating and innovating around. During the pandemic, we heard Zuckerberg talk about the renaming of his company to Meta to celebrate, I guess, this coming of the metaverse. And certainly the first thing I thought about was what you guys do, which is if there's any lag or latency, it's never going to work, right? People are, it's just not going to seem like a good enough experience. And so really critical, obviously, to continue pushing in the edge space. But, you know, talking about the pandemic, Kip, I see that, you know, you stepped into the hot seat as the chief executive officer right before the pandemic. And I'd love to hear, you know, your experience and perhaps some of the insights that you've taken away from that moment that we've all lived through. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing at the time. It was about 30 days into, uh, into the new job at StackPath. But you know what? I actually couldn't have uh, been more fortunate at StackPath since it was such a highly technical company. Um, when, I, when I thought through, hey, we need to move to a work from home or possible work from home scenario, the first thing I went to everyone and said, hey, we probably need to set up a test and see if all the systems work. I'm thinking we do this over two weeks. And the reality is it's StackPath because everyone's so technical. In 24 hours, I had 100% of the workforce not wow. coming to the office and working from home. Of course, there was a lot of modifications that needed to be done after, but the physical move from an office space where 90% of our employees used to come every day to being able to work virtually was done within 24 hours there without any hiccups. And to that point, um, you know, we closed our office and haven't had a corporate office since. Wow, that's amazing. And I mean, I think that a lot of companies that handled maybe were a bit more technical, a bit more digital, certainly their development teams, their engineers, perhaps were already living in this kind of virtual way. But that's amazing that you guys did it so quickly. Certainly, it was a challenge. Do you think that you guys will stay that way? Or is this something that will continue to evolve over time? Yeah, um, you know, we've revisited it. Um, earlier on this year, I contemplated opening up a, a smaller office than we had in the past, a smaller office more geared around collaboration than actual seats, Um or offices or cubicles, but a collaboration space just to kind of have a home base for the company. And as we, uh, as we got closer to executing the lease and walking through with the employees, um, you know, the feedback I got was everything's working well efficiently and folks weren't quite ready to go back. So mm -hmm. for StackPath, maybe over the next two years or so, we'll open a physical office, but, and we, we revisit it every year, but right now, um, you know, it's, it's working efficiently and well for us and we're staying virtual and haven't had any problems. Yeah. And Kip, I mean, the pandemic, I often think of it along the lines of that moment in every boardroom of every company where the individual that always voted against any digital change finally got outvoted. <laughs> and companies really started to speed up what they were doing. And so I just be curious, I imagine uh, that you're seeing a lot more activity in the edge computing space right now. I mean, give me a sense of like the volume of increase that's happened over the last couple of years. Yeah. So I, I would say when you look at just from a network uh, delivery or content delivery perspective, are the actual bits and bytes that we're moving for customers is probably up. Um, from the pandemic, 30, 40%. Wow. Um, and it stayed that way through the year. It's fairly, this year it kind of leveled off and, and stabilized a bit as I think everyone's come to a new norm and, and what type of virtual collaboration devices they're going to use. But it's been a, you know, 
a, a drastic increase to say the least in the in the last year and i just think that trend is going to continue not because of work from home but for for all of these technology or technological advances that are being done to deliver more interactive more smart or intelligent and just greater amounts of content yeah uh, to the end user and what end user in my mind i'm thinking of you know you or myself on an ipad or laptop or smart tv at home or our kids gaming down in the basement yeah on on the same i mean just to that point kip you know when you look forward to the back half of this year and 2023 i mean certainly we find ourselves coming out of the pandemic but <laughs> whatever you say I don't ever remember the phrase, whatever, out of the something and into the frying pan of a challenging economic situation. What do you think the priorities are going to be? And how do you imagine the next 18 months are going to shape? Yeah, well, I mean, specific to technology and what we do instead of the overall environment and getting into oil prices and inflation. Yeah, all that crazy it, stuff. You know, yeah. once again, I, I think we're incredibly fortunate as a company for where we play in the sector, because um, regardless of the economic um, ups and down of the overall economy, I don't see consumption for data um, in interaction with data declining anytime soon. Yeah. I mean, you have more and more folks instead of watching the regular NBC nightly news or Law and Order or into podcasts or, or podcasts or TV series that aren't just delivered by mainstream cable or um, national providers anymore. Instead, you're logging on to Netflix or to Hulu or Disney Plus and getting your content that way. Mm -hmm. um, the, with all the evolution in gaming, things like autonomous cars and just, you know, even basic AI applications that are being built there's a demand to process that data closer to the end user, which is a is to your point, not only helps with you know the performance and the delays, but also is just a more cost effective way of delivering the content. So for us, we don't see a, any decrease or view that we're going to see a decrease in our business. We actually see growth in our business as folks will just look to deliver a a network and a Netflix TV uh, TV show more efficiently from a cost perspective, or have a game work uh, more efficiently from a performance perspective, and we just think we're at a really good spot. So, from an overall economy standpoint, I'm not sure, but from a stack path, edge compute, edge platform security, yeah. network perspective. We're really feeling good about. You know, that. we didn't even mention really like machine learning, but I mean, machine learning alone <laughs> requires so much of this. So uh, to kind of push it to the next level, it's incredible the progress things are making, and certainly the volume and the need is only going to increase. And it's been great to talk to you about what StackPath is up to. If somebody is interested in learning more about what you guys are up to, where's the best way to get in touch with you? Yeah. The the easiest way is just to go to the website, um, like everything now, and people don't like calling. I don't know if your kids are like mine. They don't even answer the phone. They're like, send me a text. Um, but instead of texting or calling, the easiest place really is to visit the website. And from there, you can get in touch with the appropriate person to talk about the appropriate product, and we'll follow right back up with you. That's excellent. Well, Kip, thank you so much for being on Uncage today. We've been speaking with Kip Turco. He is the CEO of StackPath, which is a cloud computing and services provider that really differentiates itself by putting locations in densely populated markets. It's a way that they can be closer to end users and devices and have a fast, secure, and seamless experience for those customers. Kip, thanks so much for being on the show today, and we look forward to having you back. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Take care.